Hey there, Kayla here. Emily shows us how to build the new Iris Aluminum Edition case in our video today. Join us for the ride. First things first, unwrap your carrying case to find your keyboard case within. Also inside, you'll find a pouch that has a few more things you'll need for the build. You get FR4 switch plate, O-rings, hex keys, big and small, and some scuff feet. Emily brilliantly thought to pouch the O-rings inside a bit of paper, so it looks like candy is hiding inside your pouch, but it's O-rings. Go ahead and test your PCB. I mean, you gotta check out that rock and waterfall rainbow. Each of the aluminum cases was assembled prior to packing, so a little disassembly is part of the assembly. Now unscrew the bottom, which is made all the more fun with a 3D printed box. Now repeat this for the right half. And now unscrew your switch plate. Now your case is ready for the PCB after it is assembled. Emily's putting together the right half, which means it's stabilizer time. Fun fact, when the stabilizer insert pieces are cut off, the bits go everywhere. Across the room, into our plants, and sometimes Emily's hair. It's quite the surprise to find a stabilizer piece in your hair while showering. Here's an awesome pro tip. Emily uses the anti-static tweezers to squeeze the housing teeth together so it snaps easily into place. Now Emily's putting the top corner rotary encoder into place for the right half. If you add an encoder here, be sure it's sitting against the PCB. Pro tip number two, solder each corner down and then check if the encoder is still flush against the PCB. Then solder the rest of the legs. With the rotary encoder for the left half thumb cluster, you'll need to cut off the extra pieces.
You'll need to do some finessing to get the legs in, as turning the encoder ports was the only way it could fit onto the PCB. It will be a little awkward, but it will work. I promise. Wear your determined face. After getting the diagonal leg soldered, check if the encoder is flush with the PCB. If it is, you're good to go ahead and solder the rest of the legs into place. If you have a bit of trouble with this, no worries. We covered desoldering in another video of ours. C card, click card. Switches time. Click your switches into the top plate and connect the PCB to the switches. Always check your switch pins are straight and always support your hot swaps with a finger while inserting your switches. Emily starts at the bottom to use the top plate itself to completely settle the switches into their new homes. This way they're snug and sit nestled against the PCB. Every time Emily is inserting a switch, she has a finger over the hot swap the switch is going into. This prevents it from coming apart. Now it is time. Test your switch populated iris with VIA. Excellent. Start this step by putting an o-ring on each screw, then put the screw into the switch plate. Use another o-ring to keep each screw in place. Do this for each of the screws. Use another o-ring to keep each screw in place. Do this for each of the screws. You'll place your assembly on the top of the case. Screw down all the sockets just a little bit at first so you can make sure everything is level.
Then you can try different degrees of tightness for the screws. If you'd like it bouncier, your screws do not need many rotations into the top of the case. It will allow the O-rings to bounce more. If you'd like less or no bounce, tighten your screws down more or completely. Go ahead and add your flans to the bottom of your PCB. You need to add the scuff feet to the bottom of the case. And you need to add the feet before attaching the top of the case to the bottom as you'll want a flat surface to work on, not one that will wobble. As you're joining the top of the case to the bottom, be sure to check your USB-C ports. If they're too low, you won't be able to plug it in, so be sure to check alignment here. Time to join the top and bottom of the case. All right, you've officially got the left half done. Now, onward to the right half. You are halfway there. Ooh. 